I want to welcome everybody to our Christmas Eve service here at Epworth. Those that are here with us in the sanctuary and certainly all those who are at home. We, we bid you welcome and um, let us take and begin our service with a word and prayer. Beloved in Christ, this Christmas Eve it is our duty and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels to go in heart and mind to Bethlehem and to see this thing which is come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us hear again from Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God and the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this house of prayer glad with our carols of praise. But first, because this of all things would rejoice Jesus' heart, let us pray to him for the needs of the whole world and his people. For the peace upon the earth he came to save. For love and unity within the one church he built. For goodwill among all people. And particularly at this time, let us remember the poor, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the, all the little children, and all who do not know the Lord Jesus, or who do not love him, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. And lastly, let us remember all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was the word made flesh, and with whom, in this Lord Jesus, we are forevermore of one. These prayers and praises we humbly offer up to the throne of heaven. In the words that Christ himself has taught us, we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join in as we sing together, O come all ye faithful, and we'll be singing verses 1, 3, and 6.
Hear now these words from the prophet Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness, from that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. is a night to remember, a night when home broke in on us, a night when we were not forgotten or alone or abandoned, this night. This night is the night when here and there became one, when past and future combined in a breathless present. This is a night when we are home, in ourselves, in this family, in the God who loved us enough to walk beside us. We gather in the night to proclaim the light. We shrug off despair and embrace hope. We set aside conflict and choose peace. We push away despair by claiming joy. We overcome hate by rising into love. Because this night we know, even in the shadows of our doubt, we know that we are loved. That's what it means to be at home. We light these candles, hoping to become the light, hoping to radiate light by how we live. We light these candles to create a space called home in this place in our place, in inner places. We light these candles to declare that unto us a Savior is born, who is Christ the Lord, welcomed home by angels singing and shepherds kneeling, welcomed home by those like us who have worshipped for thousands of years, welcomed home again tonight, right here, right now in us. It's time to be home.
The second reading tonight is from Micah chapter 5, verses 2 to 5a. But you, Bethlehem Echaga, though you are small among the clans of Judea, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor gives birth and the rest of his brothers re return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth and he will be their peace. Let's join together and sing a little town of Bethlehem. We'll do verses one, two, and four. Six to 35 and verse 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled in his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. She was said to be barren 
is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Please join me in page 199 for the responsive reading or up on the screen. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, who has looked with favor on me, a holy servant. From this day, all generations shall call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is the name of the Lord. His mercy is on those who fear God from generation to generation. The arm of the Lord is strong and has scattered the proud in their conceit. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty away. God has come to the aid of Israel, the chosen servant, remembering the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Thank <laughs> you. 
And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this tax and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph and Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she, could, that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and he and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I invite you to join me as we sing angels we have heard on high and we'll sing verses one, two, and three. Chapter 2, verses 8 through 16. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find him wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. 
And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger.
Our next reading is coming from the Gospel of Matthew, reading in the second chapter, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who is to be born King of the Jews? We saw a star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed, and on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, of incense, and of myrrh. May God bless his holy word. And let us rise and sing together, We Three Kings, and we're going to sing verses 1 and 5. Good and gracious God, on this holy night you gave us your Son, the Lord of the universe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, the Savior of all, lying in a manger. On this holy night, draw us into the mystery of your love. Join our voices with the heavenly host that we may sing your glory on high. Give us a place among the shepherds that we may find the one for whom we have been waited. Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in the splendor of eternal light, God forever and ever. And on this holy night, in which God joins heaven and earth, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let us pray for the church around the world as it celebrates the birth of Christ. Bless all those who are entrusted with Christian ministry that your word might be proclaimed with truth and courage across the world. Bestow your wisdom on all who govern, that in honoring the earth and its diverse races, cultures, and religions, we may celebrate the light of this holy night. 
and grant us reconciliation to those surrounded with conflict and violence, that they may live in the peace of this holy night. Let us pray for all who are cold, hungry, and alone this night. Embrace with your tender care all who wander alone and have no place to lay their head. They may experience the hope of this holy night. Let us pray for all those who are anxious, depressed, or ill. Draw near to those who find this season a source of pain or grief, and to all who are suffering or sick, those afflicted by the virus in different ways. And we pray especially for those we remember in our own hearts, that they may find and feel the comfort of this holy night. Let us pray for parents, families, and, and newborns. Strengthen families in the bonds of love and commitment, that they may delight in the joy of this holy night. Let us pray for ourselves and for the blessings of Christmas. Open our hearts to your presence, that we may be transformed by the new birth of this holy night. And let us give thanks for all the faithful departed who have been bearers of the word made flesh. Give us grace to follow your holy ones in lives of faith and commitment that we may join in the hosts of heaven in singing the praises of this holy night. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, O God, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, Barb, you got to send your grandson up. He's got to bear the load of all the other kids that are, that are not here. So come on down, okay? Come on. Come on down. Come on. No, nope, not going to come. Okay. So... Let me start by saying, um, and I'm kind of speaking to a camera that right now nobody sees me from. Um, we've had an issue with our live feed. Um, so we're still recording, and my hope is that by um, as soon as we finish, I'll get it uploaded. But I know there's kids who will be watching along the way. And one of the things that I, I thought about, and one of my favorite songs of this season that I um, heard a while ago was a song by Gloria Estefan that I want to see Christmas through your eyes. And when I came to have grandchildren, it, that song really kind of settled on my heart. Because we as adults, we, we kind of get all wrapped up in the stuff of Christmas. We miss the joy. We miss the excitement. We miss the wonder of the story. How could it be that a little baby is born and we know about it 2,000 years later? We want to see Christmas through the eyes of a child and the wonder of this night. The excitement, not just because there's some guy that's going to come visit us in the middle of the night, but because God loves us so much. He sent a baby to us to love us, to represent for us God's love. I want to see that awe and wonder once again through my kids, my grandkids' eyes, through the young one's eyes. And that's my wish for all of you tonight, that you'll take and, and, take and absorb the wonder and the awe of all that this night brings, especially the gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Angels and shepherds and a young mom. It's awesome. Let us ponder and wonder of this wonderful night and see Christmas through those young eyes one more time. Now I want to share with you the words of John. In the beginning was the Word, 
and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning this light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent or of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace, full of truth. May God bless his holy word. Yeah, I need to take in and tell you that a week ago, I was in the midst of darkness. Um, I had come in and just going through the motions of just doing my job, coming into Christmas. Christmas Eve, doing all the nuts and bolts that needed to get done, getting the service ready. Diane and I were out um, at BJ's, and all of a sudden I got a text from our district superintendent, Hector Burgos, and he had texted saying that he had some things from um, when his wife, Gisellas, had had breast cancer, and he wanted to offer them to us, and he was willing to come down and drop them off. Well, Diane and I were out, so I said, no, we'll, we'll come up and we'll, we'll come and, and get them. So we drove up to um, Bordentown, um, near Hamilton in that area, to, to his house. And um, we talked. We talked for about an hour and a half. Um, Gisellus was wonderful, sharing all kinds of things um, that she had gone through um, with Diane. And Hector, spoke to me as a husband of a person who has had breast cancer. It was the, you know, the, one of the first conversations that I had you know, in, that, in that vein. And as we sat there, and at one point I, I said to Hector, now think about this, he's my district superintendent, right? Kind of like my boss. And, and I said to him, you know, I'm just going through the motions this Christmas. It's just, it's just been really hard. But I'm really looking forward to the next Christmas because we'll be celebrating, Diane will be done, and it's just, it's just hard. And he kind of paused and he looked at me and he said, no, no, you have to make this a great Christmas. And at that moment I realized that I had been in this darkness the darkness of all that's happening around us, not only with Diane and, and myself, but, but in the midst of everything else going on, in that darkness, I needed to take and refocus, and Hector helped me refocus on the light that is this Christmas. Over the last few days, I've become aware that there's People are almost slipping into darkness themselves because of situations, especially around the pandemic and the virus. People aren't here tonight because of, of that virus. There's people that take and have had their plans kind of all just messed up because of the virus and how it's affected them, their families. It's easy to slip into that darkness, 
to focus in on, the, on our, our gatherings, focus in on all the troubles and the, and the difficulties we're facing. It's kind of, can, times can overwhelm us. That darkness just settles in on us. But this is a night of the light. This is the night when the light of Christ is the one that needs to shine forth. So here's what I, I'm inviting people to do, especially when you watch this later at home. Dim as many of the lights as you can in your own home. And even when you all get home tonight, take and, and allow some of the lights to be turned off so that the light of Christ will become the light that, that's there. And what you realize is, even as it gets darker, and even as it takes and, and seems to settle in, that light continues to shine. So no matter where you may be tonight, no matter what you may be facing, it's the light of Christ that shines through the darkness. Even tonight, as I heard at the very beginning of our service that our live feed wasn't working, I gotta tell you, I had to let it go. I had to not let that darkness settle in. Because tonight's about light. Tonight's about the good that has come into the world. God's love for you. He loved you so much. He sent his, word, his son into this place for you. This past month, we've been in our Advent study, we've been doing a study with Andy Stanley. And one of the things that's really settled in for me and so many of the folks that have been part of that study is that this night is about God's love for you. And it's real kind of interesting to make this, this jump. If you believe that Christ came into this world and died for you, for grace, for forgiveness, then doesn't it make sense he came into this world for you? So no matter what you may be facing, Emmanuel, God is with us. That light, no matter how dark it may be, is there for us. So here's the thing I want you to do. As we sing Silent Night in, in a moment, the last chorus is Christ the Savior is born. Change the word the. Make it personal. Christ my Savior is born. That light for you has come into the world. Your Savior. It's that we celebrate. It's that light that we will hold aloft as we say that. Christ my Savior is born.
light is a symbol of God's love for you. Christ has come into this world for you. No matter what you may be facing, no matter what difficulties may be settled in on your heart, tonight, let this light of Christ shine forth to remind you, God loves you, always has, always will. Let this light shine. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm.